Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. My name is Lilia and I want to welcome you to part two of my dating story time about my ex-boyfriend who turned out to be a compulsive or pathological liar. If you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, you probably missed part one of my dating story time. In the first part, I talk about how I met Jay, how our relationship developed and how everything ended between us. So if you haven't watched it, I will have linked it right here as well as in the description box down below. And when you finish part one, I'll be here waiting for you for part two. Before I'm going to start with the second part of the story, the part where I share how I discovered that Jay was a pathological or compulsive liar, I wanted to thank you for the overwhelming amount of sweet, supportive, kind, empathic, understanding messages because of the first part of the story. Honestly, I had mentally prepared myself to be ready for whatever horrible comment I would receive because the internet, unfortunately, can be quite a dark and negative place. However, I completely underestimated you. The amount of love and support and understanding that I have received from you, it just really warms my heart and makes me feel so much better. So thank you all so much for making telling this story so much more rewarding. And last but not least, I was so shocked by how many of you messaged me with an eerily similar story to mine and Jay. So many of you have experienced very similar compulsive, pathological, lying, best friends, family members, boyfriends, husbands. I just really hope that this story will make you feel less alone because for the longest time, I thought that there was something wrong with me because no one in my close circle of friends experienced something like this and there was something wrong with me and that was why I was attracting this type of man in my life. But the truth is, it can happen to anyone. So the best thing that you can do is to be aware and hopefully this video will make you more aware as well as give you a very juicy, intense and crazy story time to pass the time now that we're all stuck at home. Before we're going to start with part two of the story time, that is going to be even more juicy, crazy and intense than part one, I would highly suggest grabbing something to drink. I'm drinking some pineapple coconut water because this story time is going to take a while. So grab your favorite drink, make yourself comfortable and let's start with part two. We left off at me breaking up with Jay through text because he was ignoring every message or every phone call that I made and he actually just left to go to Zurich for his chemotherapy because of his breast cancer. The next two weeks of my life consisted of crying my eyeballs out, eating a lot of ice cream and talking a lot with my best friends about how I needed to move on as soon as possible and he did not deserve me as one does after a breakup. And obviously I still cared for Jay. The breakup situation was just so weird that I was completely and utterly confused about the whole situation. And because he was battling a life-threatening disease, I was still very worried about him. And in a way, I wanted to stay in touch with him just to know if the chemotherapy was helping or not. I had this urge to stay in touch with him. But on the other hand, I also knew that if he wanted me to be there, he would text me. So one part of me was going through all these emotions. But the other side of me, my intuitive part, was also finally awakened and told me that something was going on. And that all happened because of the coughing incident when Jay promised me that he would pick me up from the airport. And instead, when I called him, he was acting as if he was sick by creating the most fakest coughing sounds I've ever heard of my life. And the combination of me finally starting to listen to my intuition, as well as the following event that happened, was the start of Jay's lies slowly unraveling. It was about two weeks in since me and Jay broke up. I was just casually scrolling on Facebook until this Facebook post passed by from guess who? Jay's mom. I had befriended Jay's mom on Facebook and I kind of forgot about it. But this message that she posted on Facebook 
was the first time that I had hard proof that Jay lied about a substantial, significant thing in our relationship. Jay and I would always meet at my place in Groningen, but Jay himself was actually not living in Groningen. He was living in a neighboring town 20 minutes away from Groningen. And he would always tell me that he would take his car to go to my place. And during our relationship, I had never seen his car. And for some of you guys, that's going to sound very weird, especially for example, if you live in LA, but in the Netherlands and especially Groningen, if you live in the city center, it is super hard to find parking. So most of the time you have to park quite far away from the city center. And my apartment was located in the heart, in the true city center of Groningen. So it was really hard to find a parking spot there. There were almost no parking spots. And also the city is so small that you can walk or cycle everywhere. So you don't necessarily need to park close because you're going to use it later. So when we would go somewhere, we would always walk or share the bicycle. Um, we never had to use the car. So I had never actually seen Jay's car. So when I read the Facebook post his mom made, I was just completely and utterly shocked because she wrote, I am so proud of my oldest son because he just passed his driver's license exam. What the hell? Every time Jay told me that he was on his way to my place, driving in his car. Also the time that he got stuck in Germany because the car broke down. He also said that he was driving. He didn't even have a driver's license then. And that was just such a weird and unnecessary thing to lie about. Because most of my friends didn't even have a driver's license at that time. It's very common to have your driver's license when you're 16 in the US. Our legislation actually changed only quite recently to being able to start driving when you're 16. So it was just so unnecessary to lie about, but he did. And I had hard proof he did. After this incident, my inner FBI agent slash detective slash KGB spy mode was activated because i realized that if jay was able to lie about having a driver's license and his own car he would be able to lie about way more and i didn't have to wait that long for another one of his web of lies to unravel the next week it was the first time that jay posted something on his instagram after our breakup he was never really an active person on Instagram because he mostly used it to showcase his photography and graphic design. But he did have a good amount of followers. He had about 10k. I assumed that he would still be in Zurich because when we would talk about him doing chemotherapy there, he would always tell me that, you know, he would be gone for a long time, for like two or three months. We even talked about me going up to Zurich to, you know, see him there. So... I was totally thinking that if he would post something, it would be him in Zurich. The picture he posted was him at a very recognizable place in Groningen. Now, obviously, I don't know each and every picture of him. It could have been a throwback, but he didn't mention that it was a throwback. And I did know quite a lot of pictures because when you're dating a photographer and you're an influencer, you take a lot of photos and you know each other's photos because that is, you know, your work. So he would always show me pictures that he took and I would always show mine or we would help each other out. So I was very familiar with all his pictures and it could have been a throwback, but it didn't look like it. It literally looked like a new picture. So I was just like, wait a minute. Right now, you are supposed to be in Zurich going through chemotherapy and you are posting pictures online of you in Groningen. After this, things got even more weird because he blocked me on Facebook. His mom defriended me from Facebook as well. And he deleted his Instagram page. I know that it wasn't that he just blocked me because I had a different account, obviously, because I was in FBI agent mode. So I checked with another account and his account was just completely gone. I also checked um, photos where he was tagged and 
usually it will then say a different username if you change your username, but those tags were also completely gone. So J just disappeared. I was left with a lot of questions that were unanswered. To me, that was still not enough proof to say that he was a compulsive liar, that he lied about everything, especially because lying about your driver's test is one thing, lying about cancer is on another level. So I started to believe some of his stories were lies, but I just couldn't believe that particular thing. I didn't hear anything from Jay and I really tried to forget him. I was focused on my studies. I completely quit dating whatsoever, especially online. And I just really focused on healing my heart. So the next incident that happens, <sighs> yeah, it's getting crazy. As I mentioned in part one, Jay was the only boyfriend I had that I posted publicly on my social media. So in January 2017, and for some weird reason, January has always been the worst month of the year. In 2017, it was this. In 2018, it was doing US law school exams for the very first time and freaking out. In 2019, it was getting my US visa denied. And in 2020, I would say the start of coronavirus. Anyways, I get this random DM and I open it and it says, Hey Lilia, did you go to Jay's funeral today? <sighs> when I read that, I started crying immediately. Because the only thing that was going through my head when reading that was, oh my God, Lydia, how could you? Your ex-boyfriend had cancer. You broke up with him. Then you started to think he could be lying to you maybe even about the cancer. I mean, I didn't think so, but you know, I started to question more and more about our relationship. And now someone that you don't know is sending you a DM asking you, did you go to Jay's funeral? Oh my God, your ex-boyfriend, your love died from cancer and you're sitting here being all FBI detective instead of being there. So I was like, oh my God, it was true all along. Jay had cancer and you just didn't believe him. I don't believe in heaven or hell, but at that time I thought that if a hell exists, I was going linear recta there. So I obviously respond to the DM and I say, hey, uh, I was Jay's ex-girlfriend and I haven't talked to him in months. And I knew that he wasn't doing well, um, but what happened? What's going on? I have no idea about this. I think some of you are going to think, oh my God, Lilia, you overreacted so much because this is a random DM you're getting. The account is anonymous. It has no profile picture and it's on private. Maybe that is just Jay fucking with you. And obviously I also thought about that possibility that it being just Jay trying to get to me. The more me and this girl, let's call her Mary, the more me and Mary started to talk, the more I realized that Mary was a real person and not just Jay and that he didn't only play me and hurt me with his lies, but that he did the same thing to Mary. She started telling me her story about Jay. So apparently she was a girl living in Germany and she met Jay online through a game that they were both playing. One of those like multiplayer games. They met about three or four years ago and they have been in touch ever since. She told me that during our relationship, Jay was confessing to her that he had feelings for her, that he was actually crazily in love 
with Mary ever since they met online during their multiplayer game session. Being in a relationship with me made him realize that the true love of his life was Mary and not me. And to make things even worse, he told Mary that I broke up with him because I didn't want to deal with a sick boyfriend. And I wanted someone that was there for me rather than a boyfriend that I needed to care for. <sighs> what the hell? When I read that, I was so freaking mad. And I am not a person that gets angry fast. I'm a pacifist. I don't believe in aggression. I believe in open communication and understanding of different perspectives. But when I read what she wrote, and also, by the way, it wasn't just her paraphrasing. She was actually sending screenshots of her conversations with Jay, including pictures that I took of Jay during our relationship that were not publicly anywhere. So imagine him confessing his love to a girl while sending pictures of us, or not us, but like pictures that I took of him in Paris. What? You're going to confess your love to a girl while sending pictures to her being in Paris with your girlfriend or almost-to-be girlfriend? <sighs> wow. When she told me her side of the story, I obviously had to share mine. I told her that I discovered that he had cancer because he sent me a message or his mom sent me a message through his Facebook account. That after that I saw him, you know, a few times, but then he disappeared on me and I just really wanted to be there for him, but he just would never respond. So I had to break up with him through text because he just disappeared out of my life. And when I said my side of the story, I also sent her screenshots, pictures of me and Jay. Um, something clicked with Mary because Mary said, his mom sent you a message through his Facebook account. I said, yes. And she said, well, I had the same thing happen to me, but then through his Instagram account. So why she decided to message me now was because she lost touch with Jay, like me. He all of a sudden disappeared for a few days and she started to get worried because obviously he had cancer. Finally, after a few days, she receives an Instagram DM from Jay saying, hey, this is Jay's brother, because Jay had a younger brother. I wanna tell you that Jay has passed away. He didn't survive his battle with cancer and that he's going to have his funeral very soon at this date and we're going to try to live stream it. I mean, live streaming a funeral. I don't know if that is a thing. I can see how that can be a thing, especially now during Corona times. So, you know, I don't judge against it but I just thought I've never heard of a funeral being live streamed. Yeah, that, that is why you didn't receive any messages from Jay because he passed away. What Mary then did, uh, she would also be potentially a great FBI agent slash detective because on the day that Jay's funeral was planned, she again obviously didn't receive anything from Jay or Jay's brother. So she went out to do research for herself because she loved, she loved Jay. Even though she never met Jay, she was in love with him because they were talking for three to four years, saying that he wanted to visit her in the new year. <sighs> she started calling every funeral home, every uh, graveyard, every church in the province of Groningen, where the funeral would be to ask if they had a funeral planned that day or that week 
for a J last name. And none of the funeral homes, graveyards, churches that she called had a funeral plan for J. And when she discovered that, she decided to send me a message as her final and last resort because she thought if there is one person that would know where Jay's funeral would be, it would have been his last girlfriend. <sighs> so there we were, two girls, Mary and I, both caught in the web of lies of Jay. <sighs> At that point in time, I was, I had too much to process. I was just, I didn't know what to do because it doesn't happen every day that you get a random DM from a girl first claiming your boyfriend is dead and then together slowly figuring out that maybe everything was a lie. So I told her, hey, this is nothing against you, but I really want closure when it comes to my relationship with Jay. So I would like it if you will not message me from here on now. Even if he messages you or if you have any new information, just please don't message me because I really need, I need the closure and I don't need any, any more drama. I said that and she understood and she never messaged me again. So I really respect her for that. And I also never messaged her again. And I don't even know her real name anymore. I don't, I will not be able to find that DM from 2017, which is kind of sad. Well, not sad, but I would like to have the the receipts for this video. I think it would make it even more dramatic, but I just don't have it anymore. Most people would be convinced that Jay lied about his cancer and that he was a pathological liar, or at least something was going on in his head. I wasn't 100% convinced his cancer was a lie. Because again, I was truly in love with him. I truly loved him. Lying about something as severe as cancer is just on another level. And I also didn't have very hard proof that he didn't actually have cancer. I just know that he tried to fake his funeral, but that didn't, you know, give me very hard evidence. He could still potentially have cancer and just lie to Mary about the whole situation, just like he did with me. So even though, you know, I started to believe that there were lies, I didn't have enough proof to believe everything was a lie. We're going to take a little intermezzo because the next time something happened, another lie of Jay's unraveled is going to be quite a jump in the timeline and I want to tell you what happened in the meantime. As I briefly mentioned, I was obviously super upset about the whole situation with Jay. I was heartbroken and I decided that I would focus on my studies. I was in my first year of my second bachelor, which was philosophy of a specific scientific field. It was a bachelor of arts and in my first year of my research master in laws. I decided that I would not date. I deleted dating apps that I had on my phone. I was so traumatized by Jay's behavior and by Jay's lies that whenever I would go out and a guy would come up to me and he would tell me his name and what he was doing, my first thought was, maybe that's a lie. Maybe that's a lie. It was such a toxic way of thinking, but I just couldn't help it. I never wanted to be the naive Lilia again that would fall for these lies that guys like Jay told me. I wanted to be ahead of it instead of trusting someone until they prove me that they're untrustworthy. I flipped 180 degrees to not trusting anything men told me until they showed me and had proof that it was actually true. I'm a very trusting person and I'm a very open person. I'm the biggest extrovert you'll ever meet. I love talking, I love sharing my story and I love listening to others sharing their story with me because that is how I feel connected to people and that makes me happy. But Jay makes connecting with people 
and being open to people feel like a risk. It made me feel like danger because when I would open up about things, that would make me vulnerable for other people to take advantage of me. So I started to close myself off whenever, you know, I didn't go on dates, but whenever a guy was kind of interested in me from like, yeah, partying or school or whatever, I would be super distant, super closed off. Some of you might think, okay, Lilia, obviously you need to be careful. There's nothing wrong with not being completely open and taking a while to open up when you meet new people. In most cases, or for most people, I would say yes. But if you are an extrovert and someone that really thrives from connection, not being able to share what you want to share, not being able to connect when you want to connect with a person, feels like someone was choking me. I felt like I was being choked by the fear of opening up to people. To me, it didn't feel like I grew up and became less naive. To me, it felt like I lost a part of myself and I wasn't myself anymore. After six months, my friends kind of started to not push, but, you know, talk a little bit more about, hey, Lilia, you know, six months have passed. I think maybe you should go on a date, you know, have fun. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you, you don't have to tell your whole life story immediately. If you don't like it, you can just go, but maybe it's good if you put yourself out there a little bit. And at around that time, I actually met a guy um, that I was following on Instagram. We were following each other on Instagram and he was kind of an aspiring YouTuber. He just started with YouTube. And we met at um, the Dutch YouTube gathering, which is like an event for, it's like beauty con, but then for YouTubers in the Netherlands. And um, he was there to get like some information from other YouTubers how to do it. And I was there with my uh, management at that time. So it was super random because we bumped in when the event was already over and he recognized me. And I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, hi. Let's call him Richard. Richard and I started talking and he was not from Groningen, but from a, a city nearby. And the event was in Utrecht, which is one and a half hours by train from Groningen. And I was just planning to take the train back home while he said to me, hey, if you want, I can offer you a ride. And he was actually with one of his girlfriends, just not his girlfriend, but like one of his female friends. So, you know, it wasn't like shady. Normally I would not say yes to a ride of one and a half hours from a guy I just met, but because we had talked on Instagram before, um, because, you know, he was with a girl and the girl was also really nice. We were just talking like with the three of us, I thought, you know, why not? Uh, I'm getting a free ride to my home. Yes, please, saving some coin. I'll take that. So we ended up taking the ride and it was really fun. Um, yeah, we had a great time with the three of us. And after that, me and Richard stayed in touch. I thought, you know what, my friends are right. Maybe I should go on a date with Richard. After Jay, Richard was the first guy that I found the courage to go on a date with. The first date was fun and I felt comfortable because we were both YouTubers, which meant that we had a huge topic to talk about that wasn't necessarily really personal, but also not just like, oh, how's the weather, you know, <laughs> like super boring. We just talked a lot about cameras and our favorite YouTubers and kind of our aspirations with our YouTube channel. So I felt like it was personal, but not personal in a private way, if that makes sense. So the second date, we met at a coffee shop nearby my house. We chilled at a coffee shop and then we went to my apartment because he was interested in seeing my loft. And then um, we kissed. And that was the first time that I kissed any guy after Jay. And the reason why I'm so specifically mentioning this was because I started crying. Yeah. 
so freaking embarrassing. It wasn't because Richard did anything wrong or he was a terrible kisser. He wasn't. But kissing another guy in my apartment gave me such a strong flashback to Jay that my body just instantly created this response of trauma and emotion by crying. Obviously, I was super embarrassed. You're totally giving the signs that everything is cool. He kisses you, then the girl starts crying. I mean, you know, I felt for Richard. I, I really felt bad, but I just couldn't hold my tears because I was just so traumatized by Jay and I got such a strong flashback to our relationship. So obviously, I apologized to Richard and I said like, hey, I'm sorry. Um, I had some drama with my ex-boyfriends uh, about him, you know, using me and lying a lot about me and this is the first time that I'm doing something else or like something else that I'm doing something with another guy and Richard was actually super understanding he was actually studying to be a social worker so, you know, he, he definitely responded super, super understanding but obviously it was awkward as hell so he left and i never texted him again because i was just too embarrassed even six months after jay i couldn't be with another man i just had such big trust issues when it comes to men because of jay that i just couldn't be with them even though they didn't do anything wrong and this actually happened another time the next guy that I dated, which was also again a few months later, in the summertime, same thing happened. It was a really sweet guy and I started crying again. And I think that this emotional trauma that I had was one of the subconscious and maybe even conscious reasons why I decided to study abroad. The main reason why I wanted to study in the US was because one of my favorite professors or almost like a mentor for me he recommended that if I wanted to be a researcher, I needed to have studied a different legal system. And he said that I had to go to a country with the most different legal system in a language that I would understand, so English, um, compared to the Netherlands or the EU, which was the United States. So that was the main reason why I went to DC, but I also think that another reason that I wanted to go and study abroad was because I needed a break from Groningen. For me, Groningen became a city that had so many memories tied to them, and a lot of those memories were amazing. But the recent events with Jay, and also my recent events that were quite embarrassing with these other guys that I dated, just really overshadowed that. So I decided to apply for studying abroad at George Washington University Law School and I got in and in August 2017 I moved to DC. DC was the fresh start that I needed. I remember the first time I was walking on the streets in DC. I was so happy because I realized that nothing of what I'm seeing reminds me of any bad memory anything tied to Jay, any of my breakups, there were no memories. I felt amazing in DC and I also felt a newfound confidence to start dating again because I was like, okay, I'm in a new city, in a new country, in a new continent. I don't know anyone here. Law school didn't start yet. I should be dating. I should be trying it out. I should be seeing what kind of fish there are in the American sea. So, so I think the combination of living in DC, of being able to date again, even though the dates were not that great, nevertheless, I felt like I was slowly recovering from my trauma with Jay and I was also slowly starting to be more okay about being open about my feelings, about my experiences, my history, and I also started to feel a little bit more confident and at peace to talk about Jay himself. It was October 2017, so my 23rd birthday. I obviously had to think about what happened my last birthday, 
the year before with Jay and my breakup. In order for me not to think about Jay every birthday for the rest of my life, I needed to take control of my narrative again. I needed to be the actor of my story rather than the victim of Jay's lies. So I decided that I needed to open up and that is why I wrote a blog post about my experience with a compulsive liar, about my story with Jay. That blog post took me a month to write, so I started writing it around my birthday and only in November was I able to publish it. When I published that blog post, I was very worried because I had no idea how people would respond to me opening up about something so personal. I've never opened up about something so personal on my blog before. I obviously didn't mention Jay's name anywhere, but I did feel like I mentioned a few very specific details about our relationship that if Jay was actually reading, which I didn't know because he disappeared from the World Wide Web, um, he would recognize that it was about him. But I never expected the next thing to happen. And now the intermezzo is over and we made it to the next lie unraveling from Jay. And this right here was the breaking point. Because when this happened, I had 100% certainty that he was indeed a sick human being that was a compulsive or pathological liar. After publishing that blog post, I got hundreds of messages from girls empathizing with me, relating to my story, sharing their story with me. But three of these messages stood out to me. The first message was from this girl, we're going to call her Tina. Tina was a fellow blogger that I actually could consider, you know, not like a super, super close friend, but we were definitely friends for a few years already. I think for about three years. We met at uh, the Amsterdam Fashion Week, my very first fashion week. We were both invited and I was such a baby blogger back then. And um, she was actually already doing quite well. She had way more followers than me. Um, so, you know, I really looked up to her, I thought she was beautiful and she was super kind. And um, yeah, so we knew each other, we hung out like a few times, we had a few photo shoots together too. She was super sweet and we definitely vibed. When I was in a relationship with Jay, she actually recognized Jay and she told me that one of her friends used to be his girlfriend. But, you know, at that time, I didn't wanna be nosy. I didn't wanna be one of those like, you know, shady girlfriends that would background check their boyfriends <laughs> if I would only have known. So I never asked details about his previous relationship with the friend of Tina. After I published that blog post, Tina sent me a message. She said that she showed this blog post about Jay to her friends that it was in a relationship with Jay. And I know that they've been in a relationship for four years. That's what uh, Tina told me. And Tina's friend said to me, yes, this is true. Everything that Lilia wrote about Jay, he pulled the same things with me during our relationship. He lied about so much and that is also why I broke up with him. Uh, I really tried, you know, we had good moments, we had bad moments, that's why it took so long. That's why we had like a relationship for four years. I could also really see like good things in Jay and truth in Jay, but in the end, I just couldn't handle it anymore and I broke up with him. Wow. I was shocked because Tina was a friend of mine. You know, again, she wasn't the closest friend, but she was a friend. She had no motive or incentive to lie to me. This had to be true. So if my story happened, if there was Mary, in Germany, you know, talking to Jay online, having this experience, but now also this ex-girlfriend, Tina's friend, having this experience. That makes already three girls that have the same story 
as mine. And having studied law, three witnesses makes already quite a good case. But things got even crazier because there was another message that stood out to me. This message was from another fellow blogger, also from Groningen. I've met her one or two times. We were following each other. Let's call her April. April obviously knew who I was. I knew who April was, but we weren't as close as how close I was with Tina. But you know, we were acquaintances. After reading this blog post, she sent me a DM asking me if this was about Jay because she recognized the story because she had a friend and that friend was dating Jay right now and had her suspicions about him because some of his stories were just weird and she was like slowly kind of figuring out some lies but she was not sure and when she read that blog post she just recognized Jay in the story and everything clicked with her that indeed her intuition about Jay lying was right. Imagine writing a blog post and you're writing it because you need closure, because it's a form of closure. Writing down things was always a form of closure for me. And you think you know the full story. That is why you're writing it. You think the story is ended. You think you know everything. All of a sudden, there are alternative endings or alternative facts coming to light. Oh my God, my whole story is incomplete. I have to rewrite it. But things get even crazier because there was another DM, the third DM. And this was from a girl that I didn't know. So we had Tina, a girl I knew well. We had April, a girl that I have only met once or twice, but you know, seemed cool. And we had this other girl, let's call her June. And June was a girl that I didn't know Completely didn't know. June had her account on private, but she did have a profile picture. So she wasn't like super shady as how I thought Mary was, but she ended up to be real. And June sent me a message saying, hey, Lilia, you don't know me, but I think I know who you're talking about. I think you're talking about Jay. I have dated Jay like, I don't remember if she said that she dated Jay before me. I think she said before me. And that he did the same thing with her. And that she was so sorry that I had to go through the same experience as her. Because it really traumatized her. And she just really hopes that we can do something about it to stop Jay from, you know, mistreating girls. When I read that, it was just like my whole life was crashing down because, you know, for some other people, you might have thought that I've already discovered so many of his lies, you know, that enough is enough. I would have already accepted the fact that he was a pathological liar or a compulsive liar because I wrote a blog post about it. But I also ended that blog post saying that I would never have 100% certainty because I just don't know, you know? I assume that he is a pathological liar, but somewhere deep inside me, I still want to believe that he actually had cancer. And I want to believe that some of it was true. <sighs> that final message from June, a girl I didn't know, together with April, and with Tina and Mary, it was just too much. It was just 100% certain that Jay was sick in his mind and that was what he was consistently doing to other girls. So even though this was a year after our breakup, only at that point in time, I felt like I had built a case. I had enough evidence to truly and confidently say Jay was a pathological liar. And the final part of the story is actually a very recent one. 
because also after this video, after the first part of this video of this story, I received another DM from someone recognizing the story, saying Jay's name, and telling me that she was dating him simultaneously while I was in a relationship with Jay. And reading that, even though our relationship ended four years ago, was like a punch in his stomach. Because I knew Jay was mentally cheating on me with Mary, but he never physically cheated. Or at least that's what I thought, because not that one thing is worse than the other, but I had some, some peace in the fact that at least I was the only girl he physically was with during our relationship. But this other DM from this girl proved that he also cheated on me physically with another girl during our relationship. And that was something I wasn't necessarily looking to add to this story, but it's the truth. So I can also say that not only was he a pathological liar, he was also a cheater, mentally and physically. So this is the story of me and Jay. And before I end this video, I do want to end it on a positive note. Because, you know, it's a sad story. It's not a story with a happy ending. I mean, maybe, because I, you know, survived it, I'm here, I'm in LA, I'm, I'm having a good time. But nothing about this was something that I wanted to learn. Jay was a life lesson I wish I never had to learn. Um, it brought me more pain than strength. And it really made me lose a part of me that I wish I didn't lose. So now, four years after the fact, I want to share what I've learned from Jay's experience and my life after that. Because this is something that I feel like I need to share as a follow-up on the blog post I wrote in 2017. Because although this video, or these two videos, are way more detailed than that blog post ever was, I do feel like I need to kind of tell you guys the, the postscriptum, I guess. Or maybe part three of this story time, but it's going to be in this video. And I wrote it down uh, in my Supplied by Lily notebook in Luxurious Amethyst. Fun fact, Jay actually built the very first Supplied by Lily webshop. That was Jay, he built it. So Jay was not only bad, Jay did good things for me too. And that's why it was even more difficult to let go of Jay. Anyways, the first lesson that I have learned from my experience with Jay is that it is really important to listen to your intuition and to be open and receptive towards other people's energies. My mom is a super spiritual, highly sensitive, very like in touch with intuition type of person. Um, <laughs> it's a story for another time maybe, but there is some spirituality in my family. Um, actually, like I, my grandpa was a healer. Because my mom and my family had this spiritual side to them, I was always super against it because, I don't know, kids always have this urge to be different than their parents, but then always end up like their parents kind of thing. So my mom would always say weird things and I would be like, no, what are you saying? That doesn't make sense. And then they would be true like then they would come out. And I never wanted to give my mom that satisfaction. So I always just told her like, no, you always say that while well, she was actually right. So for the longest time, I really blocked my sense of feeling people and my, my intuition because I thought, you know, it's just bullshit. But after my experience with Jay, because in the end, my intuition was the thing that saved me, I made it my mission to become more receptive. I knew that I had the potential of really feeling this strong intuition like my mom did, because for example, um, the first day 
in law school in the Netherlands, I saw this girl sitting in class and I just knew you're going to be my best friend and she ended up being my only <laughs> and best friend in law school. I knew that I was able to feel these energies and to listen to my intuition but for the longest time I just pushed it away and because of my experience with Jay I truly learned the value of feeling people's energies uh, talking about energy and spirituality on the one hand I know a lot of people are super into it but I also know a lot of people dismiss it very strongly especially from an academic field which I totally understand being a uh, I mean, I'm not an academic, but having an academic background and, you know, being super interested in research and seeing that as a potential career path, maybe later on in life, we'll see. So I know, but I do have to say that ever since I started listening to my intuition and feeling, being more receptive of people's energies, I have not made the same mistakes like I did with Jay ever again. So that's my lesson number one, listen to your intuition. Second lesson, and I think that this one is the most important one, is don't become bitter. Because after my breakup with Jay, I became extremely bitter. I had the worst trust issues ever. I didn't trust any person with a penis, I'm sorry. But if you had a penis, I didn't trust you and that was an incredibly toxic attitude to have and that's also something I read a lot in the comments even with the baggage that we carry from our past relationship and our past experiences we cannot put that on other people every person you meet you have to give them your love you have to give them your trust you have to give them you know, your kindness, you cannot treat them based on your own baggage because that isn't fair. They didn't do anything to deserve that. And the person that really taught me this lesson was my last ex-boyfriend. Um, I remember that we were dating for a few weeks and he was the first boyfriend I had after Jay. And I remember we were laying in my bed in DC and I asked him, can you promise me that you're not gonna like break my heart? And he got not angry, but he got kind of like pissed because he was like, Lilia, I have been nothing but kind and sweet and like, not, he was my boyfriend at the time, but like, you know, like, guy to you. He was super honest. He took me to his annual work party on our second date. So I met all his colleagues, like, and he was working at a big office on our second date. I met his friends super fast, like, he was never shady about his phone. I had no reason to mistrust him and, you know, our relationship ended. But it didn't end whatsoever because he wasn't honest or loyal. Nothing like that. So he said you are reflecting your past on me and it's unfair because I didn't do anything for you to doubt me so you should trust me and I was like damn you men you are 100% right I am reflecting my baggage on you while you have done nothing to deserve that so I can't do that anymore that's what I wanted to say obviously I've learned obviously I listen to my intuition now but still I'm, I'm treating every man as a good man when I meet them. And then when they show me, now I'm way more receptive of that behavior, obviously. My, my tolerance is definitely not as high anymore as that I had with Jay. But only once they start to treat me badly will I not be kind and nice and loving towards them. So, you know... Don't become bitter because of your past relationships and experiences. And last but not least, lesson number three is don't compromise yourself. I think one of the most common things to say is that a relationship is compromises. You can't always have it your way. You know, 
um, you have to add water to the wine. That's like a Dutch saying. I don't know if you can say that in English. But everything is about not being, you know, 100% super stubborn, having everything your way. You need to compromise a little bit. However, it's really important to say that in a relationship, compromises should not feel like sacrifices. Every time I compromised with Jay, when I, for example, didn't say anything about, you know, him ignoring me for days, when I was just okay with his super flaky behavior, I felt like I was compromising for our relationship because he obviously, you know, that was obviously like how he was as a person. So I should just be okay with him being flaky and not expect him to cater towards my needs. But every time I was compromising, it felt like a sacrifice. It felt like I was sacrificing a piece of me and slowly at the end of the relationship, I felt like I completely lost myself and I became a completely different person with anxiety, with trust issues um, and yeah, with just a lot of sadness and trauma. So in whatever relationship you are, your compromises can never feel like you're sacrificing yourself. And this is something actually that I got a reminder of in my last relationship. Because even though my last relationship was a good relationship, it was a great guy, but I lost myself in that relationship because I made a lot of compromises. And, you know, once we broke up, I felt like we both broke free from each other being toxic towards each other, if that makes sense. Like we were not toxic people, but together our relationship was toxic because our compromises were sacrifices of our own self, of our own identity. So my lovely, my lovely friends, we made it to the end of this video. I think that this video is even longer than part one. Maybe I should have not mentioned these final lessons at the end of this video, but I thought it was really important to end on a positive note um, for any of you out there watching this because I believe that a positive attitude is the way to go about life and I really want to share my experiences with you. I really hope that by giving you the lessons that I've learned from this experience, you don't have to go through this experience yourself. Um, I hope that I'm like the bigger older sister for you right now that is telling you not to do certain things and even though it's hard to listen to older bigger sisters often they're right so i just really hope that you can take these lessons with you um and live your life accordingly <laughs> that sounds so <laughs> um so dramatic but hopefully you, you get my point anyways i want to thank you for watching this video I hope it was entertaining. Um, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. That means a lot to me. Also, if you want to talk about any of the things that I mentioned, if you have a similar story, if you don't have a similar story, if you have questions, whatever, feel free to send me a DM on my Instagram. It's linked in the description box down below. It's literally like calm, just like my username on YouTube. And I try to respond to as many as I can, as often as I can. This intense dating story is over. And it took me a lot of, a lot of energy and emotion, but I'm glad I have told my story with you. If you guys are interested in hearing the other alternative that I had when I started to talk about doing a dating uh, story time, um, and the actual video I had in mind, because I have a few um, shorter, also crazy, but more funny, I guess. Some of them are pretty crazy too, um, like story time. If you want to see that video too, let me know in the comments down below. And if we hit, let's say 4,000 thumbs ups, 4,000? Cause we hit 2,000 thumbs up with this video real fast. So I was like, okay, that was too easy. You guys really like this video. Let's make it a little bit harder. So I have more time to prepare the video too. Cause I need a mental break 
from talking about my dating life online right now. So if we hit the 4000 likes, I will film the... It's not part 3, it's just a different dating story time about more funny but also crazy stories that don't take this long to tell. Um, so yeah, anyways, if you don't want to miss that, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, when I hit 70k on Instagram, we're now at 69k, I'm going to do a giveaway with some of my Supplyability stationery and some rose gold home decor that I actually ordered twice and I couldn't return. So I thought, you know what? It's the perfect, perfect reason to organize a giveaway. So if you're not following me on Instagram yet, I would highly suggest you do so you can also enter the giveaway that I'm going to do once we hit 70k. And yeah, it is time to end this video because I've been talking for I don't know how long and I'm worried about editing this video, but it's all good. So yeah, I hope you're all having a fucking amazing day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye guys.